Hey guys, this is Jorge from the Big Band Podcast. Today I am joined by Mohit Memoria, who I had previously about two months ago here too, talking about blockchain. Well, today is part two of that chat. We're going to dig deeper into blockchain as it pertains to the government, venture capital, and cryptocurrencies. Mohit, how are you doing? I'm doing good, George. How are you? I'm pretty pretty good, man. I'm pretty good. Thanks so, for having me again. Yeah, no, uh, thank, and thanks for, uh, for doing this again. Uh, I think uh, last time we had a pretty damn good chat, we could go on and on. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. so uh, it was only, it was only, <laughs> you know, it was only natural that we, we do a second part and uh, go deeper. Uh, so, uh, yes, what, what, I, love, I, I love talking to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, man, me too, man. So, uh, what's, uh, you know, since two weeks to two months ago that we last talked, uh, what, uh, what have you been up to? Okay, so uh, for last uh, about three fourths of an year, we were uh, building something in stealth, and this was so. Last time I didn't talk about it. Uh, we were building uh, a hedge fund sort of thing, uh, a typical hedge fund, but for cryptocurrencies. So a crypto hedge fund. Uh, it's yeah. called Go Token. So that's that's what we have been up to, and we started talking about it a couple of weeks back. Uh, still, we are not talking too much about it. Like we uh, we. Uh, we want to uh, give some preferences to people who we know uh, who want to participate earlier and then eventually in in a, in a, in a few days or a couple of weeks we'll you'll, you'll see uh, shouting about sh you'll see us shouting about it all over the internet <laughs> okay well now on that note what is uh, what is the god token <clears throat> so uh, see uh, cryptocurrency i'll tell you blockchain for me like blockchain is a tech new technology like we all know about it but blockchain technology works because this time we have uh, added the layer of money on top of it so and whenever there is money like uh, in blockchain there's cryptocurrencies uh, whenever there is money uh, there's an economy uh, uh, in in a, in, a, in a space in an, in an industry or in a new technology so and whenever there is in, in the, and whenever there is an economy uh, there are people who want to make profit out of those uh, economies and therefore and because this is also a very volatile market, it, it made it a perfect market to build a hedge fund. So there are so many people who want to invest, put in their money in this new space and uh, power the inventions that are happening in the space. And they also want to make profits in long term or medium or mid term. But they do not know where to put their money, how to put in their money. Uh, so that's what we uh, help them these people do. So if so, suppose there's one, uh, there's any random guy heard about something called cryptocurrencies and he wants to uh, invest in this space but he doesn't know how to how to do it when to do it uh, when to uh, trade uh, various crypto assets he uh, gives us his money uh, his or her his or her money and we take a small uh, fee and then we uh, manage his money and whenever he wants his money back after the expiration of the lock-in period we give him his money back he can uh, stay with us as long as possible Okay. okay. Well, that's kind of yeah. That's fine. That's interesting. So, how does it how does it actually work? So, how how it works? See, um, at the core of the things, there's a there's a portfolio of various assets in various proportions. So, we have X amount of bitcoins, Y amount of Ethereum, Z amount of Monero, Dash, Litecoin, so many of these things. So, all of the, all of the whole portfolio's value is represented in U.S. dollars, and. Uh, to represent this uh, value, we have our own token, which we are calling God token. So suppose the whole value of the portfolio is thousand dollars. So there, uh, to start with, there will be a thousand God tokens, each valued at one dollars. Now, if you, now if you say, hey Mohit, I want to invest thousand dollars more, so you'll you'll I will accept a thousand dollars. So now the value of portfolio is two thousand dollars, and to keep the consistent value of one dollar per God token, we'll create new thousand God tokens and we'll and we'll issue it to you. So now the value of portfolio is two thousand dollars. Number of God tokens supplies two thousand each at one dollar value. Now suppose there is there are there are no more investments and we keep trading day in and day out such that in six months time the whole uh, value of portfolio now becomes two thousand uh, four thousand dollars up from two thousand dollars so but the number of go token supply is still two thousand so the, each go token that held is worth twice now so you can uh, come back to us and say hey I want to redeem uh, half of my go tokens so you'll give us half of your tokens we'll destroy them and we'll give you your money back so that's how basically it will work. Okay. Like this, like this is the the uh, uh, little bit little bit uh, simplified version. Uh, uh, but but yeah, more, more or less that is what that is it. What will happen? And and, and just to understand, 
the so you're talking about some you know you know in terms of, of you know real real money right it's not the uh, a cryptocurrency that's being used in the back no no so it's it's there's no real money it's like it is all the time crypto assets that are being used at the back so if so whenever you want to uh, put in suppose your thousand dollars we will accept it worth fifty thousand dollars from you we'll never accept fiat currencies uh, we might like in in the, in, the, in the distant future but not right now so we'll accept ether from you and we'll uh, as soon as you give us ether we'll convert that ether into various uh, crypto assets and whenever you uh, require a money back we'll convert uh, the requirement amount of ether uh, the crypto assets into ether and we'll give it to you so we'll, so the entrance will be in ether and exit will be in the ether and in between it will be converted into various form of crypto assets whichever uh, whichever combination yields most return uh, to you with the uh, minimum risk okay well i think i'm going to sign up for this <laughs> <laughs> Um, so have you already, so yeah, so you said you, you were doing something, this was in stealth. Um, I mean, I, I, I went into your, uh, I found out about it a few days ago that, you know, the website, so I just look into it. I mean, right now it's just the landing page. Uh, mm -hmm. So when do you think this is going to be, uh, you know, live? So uh, currently, uh, uh, for a couple of weeks, we'll be only... Uh, we, so we are accepting money like anyone can go on our website if they find out from uh, somewhere uh, somewhere else and they can uh, send us their ether and participate in the in the token sale but for now uh, for next couple of weeks we are only talk so we have a huge waiting list of more than 4000 people not 4000 it's like 3800 something so uh, <laughs> so so 3800 plus people in the in our waiting list uh, so we want to give them first preferences because they had been waiting for a really long time and uh, once we uh, get done with them and we so we are sending them emails in a batch of 100 uh, every day so uh, so sometimes 100 sometimes 200 it depends and whenever we'll be finished with them uh, we'll uh, we'll then announce it to everyone and then we'll uh, put the website live uh, but till then uh, we have been talking to these guys uh, i sometimes if they are like in geographically nearby i go and sit with them personally uh, or, or otherwise i get our call with them to explain all the upsides and downsides so that is what we want to do and there's they are all there are only limited slots so we will be accepting only 100 plus minus 30 uh, investors to start with uh, and we want these people to be those guys who really understand the space who understand that yeah. there is a market risk too uh, and who 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 just do not put in their money for short term who are there for mid to long term at least for one year to three years yeah and and what is the what is the focus of the hedge fund like is there a specific uh, area industry that you're going to focus on yeah so uh, our focus uh, in terms of investment will be uh, on, on the long term tokens so uh, so bes before we even take a look at exchange rates or trends or anything uh, our team takes a, a look at the philosophy of a coin so every coin must have a purpose like uh, there should be no coin in our portfolio which is just there because it is uh, very high so for example bitcoin cash uh, bitcoin cash like it's super growing coin uh, but we have a very very little portion of it in our portfolio and uh, because we still do not believe that it is a really long term uh, thing uh, because uh, what Bitcoin Cash, how Bitcoin Cash is different from the normal Bitcoin is just that it is it has changed the block size, which is not a very difficult thing to do. Uh, so there is no philosophical difference as such. Uh, it's faster. I totally agree because it's eight times of the size of the Bitcoin's block. But that is not a really technical break breakthrough that Bitcoin cannot do. They can do it, but they don't want to do it because it's a temporary fix. Eventually, it will they'll also hit the ceiling again. So uh, it depends. So we want we take care of the philosophy of the coin first, and then eventually we go and see all the exchange rate and everything, and then we start trading. So philosophy of a coin is very important for us, and we invest in mid to long term investments. Like we will not put in money just for three days or five days in a coin because we'll get ten percent return on that coin in five days. Instead, we'll put in money for uh, six months to get the uh, uh, say hundred percent of the return on on the as returns. Yeah. Yeah. So now, do you do you um, do you sense do you that sense? that more you know not because this is kind of like a niche type of thing, right? The mm -hmm. still is pretty much pretty pretty niche as, as far as uh you know the blockchain and and cryptocurrency is, is concerned is pretty niche still. Uh, mm -hmm. do, do you get the the feeling or do you have a sense as to is this extending towards more the masses? You know, people who are not technically savvy about these things. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, see, uh, I so okay. So I have a few opinions. So number one, uh, a lot of people who are not tech savvy, they're getting to uh, listen about these cryptocurrencies and bitcoins and ethereum from the normal uh, mass media channels yeah but but what they're hearing is not the technology or the economics of and what they're hearing about is the about bitcoins or other cryptocurrencies from in a few they hear this story that hey this pizza delivery guy was paid in 12000 bitcoins 6 years ago and now that um, number of bitcoins is worth Several millions of dollars. Yeah. So they're hearing these stories and they're uh, getting the wrong opinion about cryptocurrencies. They're, they're uh, looking at more from the investment point of view uh, rather than from the utility point of view. So it is it is going towards the masses. Uh, but I would say uh, again, a very uh, class of masses who are active investors who uh, put in their money, who have spare money to uh, risk it. Uh, but I think real breakthrough will come. Uh, when uh, several problems of the blockchain as a protocol will be fixed. So there's a huge problem with blockchains, which is it is slow. And because it is slow, it is very expensive. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how. So suppose, so blockchain has this one fundamental thing, one fundamental concept, which is everything must happen on every node. And by node, I mean the computer uh, powering the uh, uh, miners computer or the, or the computer powering the network. So now, because now everything has to happen on every computer, what happens is if more computer joins, the overall trust of the blockchain goes up. Like if that I'll trust a blockchain who has 20,000 miners as compared to who has just 20 miners. So for trust, we need a lot of miners but because when there are a lot of miners and everything has to happen on, on, on the, on, all the computer, overall network gets slow. Uh, ex- doing the same thing on two computers is uh, relatively faster than doing the exact same thing on 20,000 computers. So as the trust goes up, the speed of the blockchain goes down. And this is like one uh, very tricky problem to solve. And uh, how do we do it? Uh, I'm not very sure. It is definitely technically possible from the uh, uh, from from, from uh, so it is it is definitely possible from a technical point of view. Uh, there must be some things done in the protocol itself, and there had been discussions for last several years about this thing. And recently, I. About about a month back, you must have heard of this thing, uh, Segwit two, Segwit two, Seg, Segwit, Segwit two X. There was a fork and so many things. So all of these folks were happening to solve this particular problem. They wanted to make the Bitcoin network faster, and faster network in a scalable way is a challenge, and we need to fix it. And once that happens, I'm very sure that it will be adopted by masses as the, in the, in their everyday use. Right now, if you go to Starbucks and even if the Starbucks is willing to accept your bitcoins. And you transfer your bitcoins. It will take couple from couple of hours to about a day to oh uh, for, for that bitcoin to reach. So you you'll not you'll not you you'll not be willing to stand in the queue till then. Uh, so so this is the problem. Uh, so if the network is fast, like you press a button over here and they get the bitcoin over there, they'll serve you coffee and you'll uh, get back. That is kind of uh, scalability we'll need to fix in the blockchain protocol itself before it. Uh, gets adopted by the general general public right now it is only used as the investment instrument uh, it is only used to store the value like gold and nothing else mm. but i but i truly believe uh, this is like the very early days of internet where only thing that you could do in, on internet was send some text from here to there uh, but eventually now oh, we are just having this conversation over the internet after after several years so probably so things will change technology will evolve uh, new new uh, smart people will come up with better solutions to scale this thing and i'm very hopeful that in next 5 to 6 years uh, we might get to buy starbucks uh, to buy uh, a starbucks <laughs> coffee using bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency so i mean it, yeah it's, and then you know i, I, I totally understand what you're saying now is there uh, you know like the the big tech companies are they getting in on this problem i mean cuz they have the biggest resources i mean I'm, not that i'm not that i'm rooting for google or microsoft or any any of these guys to uh, to do uh, to monopolize <laughs> start start monopolizing the blockchain and stuff like this but i mean they do have big resources to crack problems like these in terms of scaling do, do you have any idea if they if they're, if they're doing anything uh, okay see so, so, so imagine there's this blockchain network, it's a Bitcoin network where uh, there are 10,000 miners in the network, right? And if you just add one computer, which is like a huge computer by Google or their, one of their whole server farms, it still doesn't make the network faster because the fastest the network will be, uh, the slowest of the, uh, the 
the network will be as fast as the slowest of the computer in the network. So because mm -hmm. everything, so one way, one one theoretical way to make the network network faster is to upgrade all the computers, like to put in a limit such such that a computer with these requirements has, like a computer must have satisfy this threshold of requirements to join this uh, network, so that the network doesn't slow down. But it is only theoretical, uh, not practical. There are other ways. There are other ways which is. Uh, uh, so proof of stake is one thing. Uh, proof of stake will uh, decrease the uh, the decrease the uh, this thing. Uh, uh, the electricity it takes to run computers. So probably will not need so many computers. Uh, probably we'll be able to do uh, mining uh, using our consumer laptops or mobile phones. Uh, mm -hmm. But besides that, uh, there must be a way. Like they, I think technically speaking, there's a key thing missing. You cannot divide one task into two tasks and send it to two different computers and then combine the result together what ha what has to happen in current blockchain is one task has to be copied two times on two different computers and both of them will uh, compute their own results mm -hmm. and because both the tasks are same they'll both uh, get to the same result one scalable way is to have a technical breakthrough uh, it, and it will be a huge breakthrough whoever does it to uh, get the ability of dividing a task into multiple uh, chunks sending it to multiple computers so that they do not do, do the same thing they do uh, 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 complementary things and whenever each of them is done they somehow share the result and eventually have both the results uh, uh, and eventually both the computers have the same result uh, by performing half of the half of the task so that, that this is a kind of a mis missing piece uh, we know that this is a missing piece but how do we do it we have no real clue right now and uh, there are some oh several God. research yeah so we have we, we so uh, in in some use cases this is kind of possible. Uh, uh, for example, there's a decentralized storage. So uh, uh, companies like Storage or Filecoin, if you so they are like this decentralized Dropbox. They'll keep your file on uh, uh, on on this decentralized blockchain. So uh, instead of a centralized server, so what will happen is uh, you'll send a file. Uh, they'll divide it into multiple chunks, and each chunk will be kept on multiple phones or laptops uh, in the network. And whenever you will require a file back, uh, they'll assign, they'll assemble the file back from these different uh, uh, different computers and laptops, and they'll give you your file. Now, this is possible in the very in the static file. Like they can divide the static file and then uh, put it over there, and then get the uh, combined result mm -hmm. back. But this is not possible in the dynamic programming programs. Like, what if I want to train an AI model such that all the computers in the network contributes? complement uh, compl uh, com complements each other's work like no it's it, it is totally unfeasible unpractical for everyone to do the same training of an ai model instead if there are 10000 computers and and each computer could do a little bit of work then the whole model will get trained immediately like if not immediately like very instantaneously so this this is the kind of breakthrough that uh, we would like to have in the blockchain and it is very it is still too early to say but uh, yeah if like if if any of the listeners is uh, here listen listening to this problem they might want to uh, go and do uh, perform some research into this and maybe uh, help us out uh, help us the whole of the community and the industry and the space to solve the scalability problem but blockchain uh, has this problem of scalability a huge problem okay. that we need to fix before general public starts accepting uh, cryptocurrencies and they start using cryptocurrencies in everyday life. Okay, now I'm just going to throw something out there. Um, the you know uh, the reason I mentioned the the Googles and the Microsoft and, and these people and these companies is because uh, Google. I mean, I'm not too too familiar with it. I mean, it's been a long time since I've gotten into how their their uh, you know infrastructure works, but they they have this you know their server farms are are very much you know they I mean I'm, I'm not I'm not sure if they replicate everything or or have like a big I'm pretty sure they have a big cache system but mm -hmm. is, are they they don't serve as a uh, as a benchmark as far as how to scale uh, you know the blockchain is is different yes yeah so a very good question in the server farms. There are servers. They, so suppose there are hundred servers. To control and to manage that hundred, those hundred servers, there will be one server which will act like a coordinator or a manager. Mm -hmm. So this one server will control and keep a record of what is happening where. But in terms of blockchain, there is no central server. Like all these hundred servers has to somehow talk to each other to understand where is so what is happening where, and this and so this is the whole problem. Uh, that so. Bitcoin solved one of these problems. So when Bitcoin's research paper came out in 2008, 
uh, it solved one of these problems like how to make these two computers talk to each other such that each of them knows one uh, any and uh, there's so so that each one of can figure out that there's no one uh, in the network who is trying to be dishonest this was a breakthrough because how do you make uh, be, without a central server how do you make these hundred computers talk to each other and still know and still make sure that everyone knows about everything everyone else's state yeah. this is a challenge this is a problem this is a technical problem and we'll get to it uh, but uh, yeah it, it it is entirely different problem from what how how these google and facebooks of the world has scaled because they were controlled ev because facebook the company has controlled over every server they knew what is sitting on each server so they could uh, they they could do all sort of things but because this is central decentralized space one server does not know what is happening on the other, other uh, 99 mm. servers this okay. is a problem Okay. How, how 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 do they, how do they still how do they keep doing the task they has they have been assigned and still talk to other 99 computers to keep track of everything so this this, this sounds like a too much of work uh, but there has to be a way we'll find a way it's just a function of time i guess okay okay so so even even with this set i mean there's there's still uh you know because it's it's i mean i i look at the you know like the cryptocurrency thing as very fragmented still um, I'm not. I'm not uh, at your level of uh, expertise or enthusiasm. <laughs> you know, enthusiasm. Uh, I'm pretty. I, I think like I'm half half still, in terms of uh, me me having contact with these things. Uh, I'm still looking at it pretty much like uh, from the big picture. So I see it as still very fragmented. But for from your point of view, who's more in in, in into this on a day to day basis, you know, what are you seeing in terms of you know trends, adoption, and usage in, in cryptocurrencies? Uh, be, beyond you know the things that we you know you, you you like you said you know the things that media posts you know most of the time. <laughs> yeah. Um. See, there are a few trends that I've been not not noticing. So, hey, here they are. Number one, uh, I'll start with the biggest issue, like with the Bitcoin. Like Bitcoin is the uh, cryptocurrency with the largest market cap, and the issue that it is facing. And I think I think this is this will be the issue with the. Uh, any any new cryptocurrency that mm, people might want to create so uh, 85 percent to 90 percent of the bitcoins nodes are in china now the problem with this thing is uh, if there's a protocol update or a protocol upgrade that uh, the, uh, that the developers feel so developers are different from miners developers write the code that these miners run on, run on these computers and miners get rewarded in bitcoins uh, for running their code so yeah. what happens is if the uh, if if the, the if the developers of uh, if the community like they are not this is there is not there is there's, there's not a company who is developing the bitcoin uh, core or the bitcoin software so if this open source community decides that hey we should do one this, this we should have this change in the protocol such that it allows to it allows everyone in the world to have equal uh, right to participate in the uh, and and become the bitcoin miner they will face a huge uh, resistance from these current miners who are in china because okay. they, they are a huge minority they'll say hey you Make this change, and we'll stop running your software. Like we'll uh, fork your software, and we'll run whatever version we want to run. Like, so this this is a problem. So blockchain runs on a community. Uh, they, it is uh, so the community has the miners who are putting up the electricity and powering the network. It community also has developers who are always thinking about users like us, and then there are users who are actually using this network. All three of these must align. They must almost all of these three. Uh, uh, kind type of actors in this system have more or less similar incentives like all of these should be uh, incentivized towards better adoption of this cryptocurrency in the general public which is not happening all of these guys have their own incentives miners have their incentives to make most money um, developers have their incentive to uh, diversify the uh, uh, diversify the cryptocurrency or the blockchain and then the users Users have their own of their own incentive. We want to use it as uh, at as many places as as we want. So uh, if so, this is one problem that I'm seeing with uh, with with Bitcoin particularly. And and if this trend continues, what I what I'm what I sometimes predict is there will be Bitcoin was the first cryptocurrency. It showed us that something like this could happen. But it is not perfect. Like it is so far from being perfect. The community is so divided all the time, and it faces so many folks. Uh, 
So what if I sometimes predict that there will be another currency who has learned all the lessons that Bitcoin has taught us and who, who and which already has this thing, these protocol, uh, these things uh, written in the protocol itself such that uh, it cannot be influenced by any sort of community, be it uh, geographically based or a religion based or a gender based or race based. Um, so, th so this is one trend that I'm seeing. Uh, Bitcoin is here to stay. Like uh, I'm completely bullish on Bitcoin for next uh, few years. But if you ask me, 50 years from now, will Bitcoin be the cryptocurrency of the future? I doubt that. Uh, I believe in seven to eight to ten years, a different currency will come up. Uh, like there, there were several search engines before Google. Google learned all the lessons from their from their mistakes, yeah. and they started with something much better. To in, in in the beginning itself, so I I I I I sometimes predict that there would be a different currency that will be the become the currency of the future. So that is one trend that uh, I have seen. Second trend I have seen is blockchain is not scalable. Exactly what we have just uh, discussed a few minutes back. Blockchain is not scalable. People are trying to do uh, some stuff um, to 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 weed there. People are trying to do research to how how to scale blockchain. Uh, that is another trend that I have noticed. Third is, uh, people are very ex like people are very cute. Like I, I am amazed by the curiosity of human beings. <laughs> we are, we, yeah. So, so we are doing all sort of things with blockchain. So uh, sometimes, like you, you, you can argue against it. Uh, like blockchain, people, people are uh, understanding. People are thinking of blockchain as a hammer, and whenever you have a hammer in, in your hand, everything looks like a nail. Like you can say that. You can say that, but I think it is a very important phase to try to uh, to try out everything with one tool. Can you do this thing with this? Can you do this thing with this? Like you, you cannot just say no because this is such a new tool. You want to try everything out and see what works and what doesn't. Just like with internet, uh, like can you play movies on this? Can you play songs on this? Can you do shopping on this? And eventually, everything is possible now because yeah. some very curious minds. Started asking this question: Can you do this with thing with this? And now what I've what I what I'm seeing is uh, probably a couple of years back you must have heard this trend of sharing economy when yeah. Uber. So you do not need a car; you can rent a car, you can use it. So basically, you just need an access to uh, access to a resource, and you pay for that access instead of owning uh, owning that resource uh, yourself. You can stay at hotels. So the uh, Airbnb doesn't own any hotel, but they provide you the access and they make money. So all sort of sharing con sharing econ economy was there. Blockchain can fit in at in in all of these sharing economies. Yeah. Like if you if you think what Airbnb but what Airbnb or this Uber does is they just provide a settlement layer. So these these companies are just keeping track of uh, what are the resources I have, what are the uh, uh, what what is the demand that I have on the other side, and how can I match these two up? Like they inside inside their uh, uh, inside their uh, servers, they perform a particular uh, protocol or, or an algorithm to match these two things, and they make money out of it. Now, what if I'm just thinking, what if we replace this Airbnb or Uber with a blockchain? Like blockchain is again a protocol. Like it will fail. It it will uh, have a fixed number of steps and fixed uh, uh, thing fix, fixed path to determine which, which what to match with whom and, and these companies who who are merely acting as platform platforms to keep the track and do all the matching and all, all sort of thing these companies can be replaced completely by blockchain and people are people are experimenting this uh, at various levels like some people are doing at very basic level and some people are doing like at far advanced level they there is one company who is Trying to do clean energy distribution, clean energy sharing on top of blockchain. Yeah. yeah. Imagine there is a town where there are hundred houses. All all the roofs do not get equal amount of sunlight. What if the forty roofs who who get we uh, which get good amount of sunlight, they put up their solar panels and the storage and everything, but the wires from those panels will go to every house in the uh, in the town. So this forms like a small uh, grid, small electricity grid. Now they because of now because forty uh, guys are producing the electricity and sixty guys are consuming the electricity, so there will be some producers, some consumers, and these two things, these two characters interact each other on top of blockchain. Now, if you have an electricity meter in your house, that electricity meter will be replaced by another device which allows you to transact on blockchain. So you can say, hey, I want electricity from that particular house for next forty-eight hours, 
and i'll just make a transaction using this uh, energy coin just 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 uh, coining a name <laughs> fun <laughs> and i just i just coined a coin name so yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and then they, they they put up the energy coin as soon as they uh, tell the device hey i want energy from that particular home to this home that gives out a signal to all the devices in the network such that there's a path established from the producer's home to the consumer's home and for next 48 hours and as soon as the next 48 hours gets uh, over the energy coin that he paid to his device gets tra transferred to the to, to 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 the device of the producer so people can share and what what it, what it does is the overall cost to put a town on clean energy goes down mm -hmm. because, yeah. because 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 now the producers are earning money uh, to to uh, distribute their surplus energy so the overall cost of putting up their uh, putting up that hardware the solar panels the storage will eventually go down and there, there, there are other guys who are consuming energy and they save money by not putting up that hardware so the overall cost in a town goes down uh, by uh, distributing the roles between producers and consumers so these like these are the various weird examples that i come across every, almost every day and i'm uh, amazed by what people are trying to solve using blockchain uh, now we know that uh, we do not need these settlement companies, these settlement layers. Blockchain yeah. can act as a really good settlement layer. So these are the few trends that I have been noticing for last uh, few months. And I'm really astonished to see and read and hear what people <laughs> are doing. Uh, yeah. I, I, uh, I, heard, um, I heard and I read, uh, maybe you did too, about this. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember if it's a spe you know, specific uh, automotive company that's you know, either researching on this or or think or you know actively experimenting. But I heard that uh, they're they're trying to use the blockchain in transportation to uh, to reduce traffic congestion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the incentive is that you know if your cars, you know, this is this is looking at you know maybe five years out, right? So when we get to a point where every car is connected to the other car, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and basically if I want to get ahead. I pay, you know, either the cars are in front of me a fee, so they'll let me pass, <laughs> so I can, so so I can reach my destination faster. <laughs> um, wow. I mean, I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know if that's exactly going to reduce traffic congestion. I mean, in exactly how? I mean, there has to be some sort of, of uh, you know, policies behind it, as in terms of how many people can do it at the same time, <laughs> or how many. You know, times in a in a day or during you know certain hours, can you do it? Because imagine everybody trying to get ahead of everybody. I mean, it it, it I mean it it still works that way. I mean, I don't I mean I mean I don't know how it works in India, but um, <laughs> um over here, in, at least if you go to Mexico City, I mean, it's just the uh, it's insanity. I mean, it, you know, <laughs> it's insanity <laughs> in terms of you know the the number of cars that are on the street, but. I mean, I thought that that use case is very interesting. In, as you said, you know, people are very, very, very curious and as to how to put these things to use. And I mean, I, when I read that one, I was like, holy, I, I've never thought about that one. <laughs> I definitely never thought about that one. <laughs> so, so these are the things that I'm astonished at. So this is a brilliant, brilliant idea. So what I'm thinking, uh, so here's how I'm thinking about it. If you want to reach your destination early, uh, you need to spend some money. And if you're okay reaching, so so if if you're a nice guy who leaves uh, half an hour before, and it's okay if you reach a little bit 15, 20 minutes later, but you make money out of out of that trip, like I would be taking yeah. that trip. So personally, uh, how I drive is I do not drive rash. Uh, uh, sometimes I just keep my car slow and uh, let the other people pass. Sometimes even the bicycles take over, <laughs> they uh, overtake my car. So I would be like. I would be amazed if I could just make money out of those courtesies, little courtesies that these um, sometimes uh, elderly people do uh, yeah. to, 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 to let the young people pass. And young people will be charged because they've been given the way. So this is so this is again the economy. Uh, if you can, so blockchain is a technology, but economy powers it. Economies and the incentives are the things that made this technology breakthrough. There were several algorithms which were earlier present, uh, which which could coordinate between two peers and do all sort of stuff. So torrent is one example. Torrent mm -hmm. was there for years, and it was it, it was all peer to peer. And the only incentive with torrent was these people who were who who were seeding these movies and these songs and all sort of these uh, various games. These people had one incentive, which was to uh, make this thing available for free. 
it 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 was not a monetary incentive that incentive was like a satisfaction within their own hearts or something but uh that incentive didn't work in other places but if you put the economics behind a uh, blockchain on on this platform in the form of cryptocurrencies then it can do save several stuff uh, where, where the incentive where the incentive of your, of your heart is not enough there the blockchain can work wonders so yeah, yeah so so yeah so so that 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 was an interesting breakthrough and i think uh, if like if you are one guy if 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 you are one company or a startup or a team of uh, a b- bunch of students uh, who want to build next business uh, think of blockchain more from economics point of view and less from technical point of view mm-hmm. i think i think i think both are important because cars must be technically enabled to do this on probably if the world is taken over by the tesla cars it might be possible because they are all they'll always connected to internet but uh, yes like amazing opportunities <laughs> Yeah, no, that's interesting. I, you know, I, I hadn't thought about the the torrent protocol. I mean, I'm, I'm familiar with it. Obviously, you know, downloading torrents and whatnot. <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, I'm not. I, I hadn't thought about that. That's that's very interesting. Have you even put that idea forward yet? No. Uh, which which idea? The the one about the torrent combining with the torrent, the torrent protocol. Uh-huh. Uh, not yet. So, uh, not yet. Uh, so, the point I was trying to make was torrent was a distributed decentralized protocol which existed yeah. way uh, before Bitcoin came up. But it, but it could not satisfy other countries. So you, this, but 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 to put the torrent-like protocol in other places of the society, we had to put incentives with it, and that's what blockchain did. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe maybe yeah. uh, maybe maybe if you just seed some uh, torrents and you get paid, it could be an interesting thing. But I'm not sure uh, how 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 much legal it would be. Uh, but but there's another part of the torrent. What if you just seed? the legal things you buy some song and you distribute that song the copies of that copies of that song you get paid and the royalties go to the artist that could be an interesting proposition to the artist instead of artist paying so uh, so much of money to these distributors they, they could just pay to these uh, seeders who will be get who will be paid and in in return the artist will get pay, uh, royalties paid and all of this thing will happen on blockchain so no one in the whole system can just run away with with the money or be dishonest interesting mm-hmm. interesting take i think this yeah. should be my uh, next edition of unmade <laughs> <laughs> unmade yes <laughs> there you go man there you go hey so we're i think uh, we're uh, we're segmenting into a good topic which is government um because we're talking about you know Blockchain as a community is 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 and less as a technology, uh, mm-hmm. but I do have to ask you before we jump on that. In terms of because uh, you know, just just backtrack a little bit in terms of the the hedge fund. I mean that's it's it's not it's not the um, as I understand it, it's not the like the what's you know the hot trend that's going on right now, mm-hmm. which is the the initial coin offerings. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But uh, what are your thoughts on that? You know, what are your thoughts on the initial coin offerings, and do you think that's going to disrupt venture capital? Hmm. So yes, Inter- good question. So I have two thoughts, and one one, the concept of initial coin offering is fantastic, but all these companies who are doing so many ICOs every week, they should not be happening. Uh, like, uh, there are so many companies. Who are coming up with ICOs for any sort of thing, uh, for for any random shit that they can think of? All they need to do an ICO in this uh, exploding market is think of an idea which is really, really theoretically possible. They do not give a damn if it's uh, if it is phys- uh, if it is really, uh, uh, realistically possible. They 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 make a white paper, they make a presentation, there's a tiny website, and they and then they raise money. So uh, the concept of ICO is great, but I'm not too sure if so many ICOs must happen like at such frequency, because when whatever money they raise for, they they have just started the journey. Like they have to deliver that protocol that they have promised to deliver. Yeah. If they don't, so the problem is. Anybody is doing it, and when anybody does it, I am sometimes uh, afraid. And when men, so uh, I I remember this quote. Not I'm not sure by whom. So it it, it goes something like this: uh, Be greedy when everyone is afraid, and be afraid if everyone is greedy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So now this so in the current times, almost everyone is greedy. Uh, uh, but but uh, keeping that portion out of this thing. I think I believe ICOs are a great instrument to raise money to build companies and protocols. 
because uh, what I see you not just raise money, I see also does one more important thing, which is network effects. Like now, imagine yourself. Suppose uh, there's an ICO of something called um, mm, Filecoin. So you, you, you have, have you heard about Filecoin? Yeah, I have. Yeah. So Filecoin is like decentralized Dropbox. Uh, you 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 put up your files in the Filecoin protocol in the Filecoin blockchain, and uh, it gets divided into various chunks. And whenever you need it back, they combine the chunks and give it to you. But the payments, the, trans the transactions will not happen in dollars. It will happen in uh, Filecoins. So mm -hmm. now suppose if now suppose you as the user has participated uh, in the Filecoins ICO. So and, and imagine you bought uh, twenty Filecoins, for example. Now, now you are incentivized actually to uh, talk about Filecoin to your friends until until they started uh, developing the protocol. So, so the company once had they have concluded the the ICO, they'll go and start building the protocol that you can use say after twelve months. And when that protocol comes out, you number one mm -hmm. will have a will have a, an incentive to use the protocol because you have already paid for it. Number two, you because you own the currency which is used in this protocol, you will you want that currency to increase in value, and to and how will how it will increase in value when the demand of that currency goes high. So everyone who participated in the ICO will talk about it. This is like uh, automated referrals within the network within the system itself. ICOs besides raising money also allows you to put in network effects, built in network effects. In the in the, in the in in the product, Filecoin's team will not have to run a different referral program. They will not have to run a huge marketing because the users will be referring their friends and families to use this network eventually, so that whatever they're holding the Filecoin's worth, uh, the value of those Filecoins go high, and they get and they could do you more a lot more using those limited number of Filecoins. So, for example, if there are just twenty users and you had twenty Filecoins. Uh, you could probably save 20 MB of your files within the network, but if there are 2,000 users who are fighting for these file coins, because the demand is so high and the supply is so limited, you will pay a lot less for a lot more space on the network. So this is uh, again incentives. Blockchain. It, it is interesting to look blockchain from the economics and the incentives point of view. The incentives behind ICOs and everyone who is participating in the ICO, they become evangelists of the protocol itself automatically. And that is the best part I like about ICOs. Uh, if you really, if if you are, if you're not just trying to pull out or pull uh, pull a scam on the people, and if you are really serious about building this protocol, ICOs are the best way. And uh, uh, you get two things: money to build your protocol, the investors, uh, and then third, the ready users, users who will be evangelizing you, who will be talking about you all over the all over the places, which. Is any which is something that any company would want any day, but yeah. So this is like my take on ICOs. But then I also hear this question: Hey, what we are we invested in this company, but we didn't get any any equity in this company. What do we do? So if I could just take two minutes to answer this question, if yeah. you would be interested only. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So when I hear this question, which goes something like this: Hey, I invested this amount of money in this company, and I got this talk these tokens but i still do not own any equity and ownership and any right in the company i mean it is not required with the blockchain companies the value lies in the protocol itself so technically it's called fat protocol so http and smtp are thin protocols because http do not have the its, its own value inherent value the value was built by google and facebook which used http to build a use case on top of it but in terms of blockchain it comes to blockchain the Protocol itself has the value because protocol to use the protocol you'll need these cryptocurrency that powers the protocol. So think of protocol as the car and the this cryptocurrency as the fuel. So because if, there is no use of the uh, fuel without the car and there is no use of the car without the fuel. Uh, now so the whole economics is in the protocol itself and the companies who get who get which get built on top of it will be thin companies. The equity in the company will not matter much. Now here's the important interesting thing. The all the the whole of the value lies in the protocol itself in the cryptocurrency that powers the blockchain uh, the, this uh, protocol. If the investor who has invested gets rewarded in the cryptocurrency or the tokens of that protocol, actually he has the influence now. The equity will not matter much because the project will be open source. Uh, the the network will be decentralized. There will be nothing, almost nothing, near to nothing that the company who holds the equity will be able to do. All the Things that will happen eventually will happen by the community. 
there'll be open source developers who will be debating and fighting uh, with each other. Hey, we should do this. No, this, this is these. These are the drawbacks. These are the pros and these are the cons. There'll be communities fighting with in in, in the discussions, and eventually there there will be some sort of voting, and then the features will be released. And there's decentralized network who will be powering this network. Basically, the equity of the company makes no sense in in the blockchain company. Like it makes some some sort of sense, but not not enough uh, sense to like fight for. Uh, Equity instead of tokens. Tokens gives you the influence and the presence in the network. So eventually, if some if if some of the protocol moves to proof of stake, where you are heard, your voice is louder. If you have more stakes, uh, I'm just oversimplifying it. Basic, so it, that's what it uh, means. If you if you own 20% of the, of the stakes of the uh, token uh, of the protocol, you have a 20% louder voice. So like uh, you have your voice will be considered 20% uh, of the entire voices. So now. If you own 20% of the token, you can start influencing the system. You can say, hey, I think this should happen or that should happen. So things, so the perception has to be changed. You still own something which will influence the network and the worth of this token. The equity will not matter much. This, this was one thing that I wanted to uh, go about ICOs. This is one question that I keep hearing, uh, but I think it doesn't make any sense to fight over equity when you already have uh, been rewarded in tokens. Yeah, yeah, that's good, man. Um, um, you know, I, I have a friend who's uh, running ICOs in Southern California. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as what the what I've been talking to him uh, previously is is you know he has some of the same sentiments as you do. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, I mean, it, I mean, I haven't participated in it yet. Um, I'm more of a, you know, kind of looking at it from the from outside, you know, seeing how this works because, you know, for me, usually when everything starts, it starts mm -hmm. very frag very fragmented, and yeah. it's a very niche type of people who start only doing these types of things. So for me, it's like it's interesting, but at the same time, it's like you know, people are greedy, <laughs> like you were saying, yeah. Yeah. and uh, you have to be careful uh, because it's it's like it's not like. This has been going on for years and years and years. It's just, you know, it's the new shiny thing, and everything. Everybody's t trying to jump on board and be the first ones to, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, have an advantage, if you want to call it that. Um, about the, you know, like these types of things are called the uh, the marketing pyramids. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, you know, all these things. Um, so, in, I mean, I, I, I have, I mean, I, I kind of see these things kind of similar to that sometimes. Where it's like uh, the first wave kind of takes advantage of it, and then the second wave is is kind of left left behind. But technology works different, so it's it's a little different in terms of when it starts, you know, ev evolving. And uh, for me, the the ICOs I'm looking at, I'm like, God damn, how many other variations of funding <laughs> um, are are gonna be created? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I I was like, this is this is great. But at the same time, it's like, but who's who's behind this? <laughs> yeah. I mean, who's behind it? Because I've been I've I've done the the Kickstarter thing before, and it, it's you know it's 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 similar, but at the same time, it's not. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, like the equity thing and stuff like that. But I mean, we, let's see let's see what what happens with this. Um. So uh, the the you know the the last part of the, of the conversation, if you will, is is related to the government. <laughs> um, so I mean, it, there's there's uh, there's various ways that blockchain, you know, can be applied to the public sector, that can be improved, you know, that can improve the, the quality of government services, uh, you know, any type of thing. Uh, for you, um, I don't know how what's going on in India, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. or you know, general just general thoughts for yourself. Uh, you know, what do you think is the promise of blockchain for governance? And what are, are its applications? Hmm. Uh, good question. Uh, I'm also just a curious thing. Do you uh, watch Game of Thrones? Yeah, I watch it. Yeah. Okay. So I remember this quote uh, by Daenerys Targaryen, which goes something like this: Lannister, Baratheon, Stark, they are all just spokes on a wheel. This one's on top, and that's one on top, and then on and on it spins, uh, crushing those on the ground. Yes. We are not going to stop the wheel. We are going to break the wheel. So blockchain, in one sense, is something like this. Till now, we have been told that democracy works. You elect something. If you don't like something about that, you elect the other guys. 
It's like Clenister, Baratheon, Stark. They're all just spokes on the wheels. But blockchain just breaks the wheel. Blockchain says, hey, we do not need these guys actually. Like if, uh, if, if it, it is not enough to cast your vote once and then uh, get treated by their, uh, by their own will for next four years or five years, instead what if there could be uh, a voting system for everything that you wanted to do by everyone which might be uh, affected by this decision. So that, that this, this philosophy is something that uh, goes against the current uh, uh, current current uh, form, form form government that we have in uh, most of the countries but besides so this is like a long maybe maybe something that will happen on a long time horizon but in short time horizon there are several things that the government itself can start doing which will also um, imbibe a lot of trust in the in the citizens of the country so they can start with transparency they can start with offering transparency and they can start doing that by recording everything right now we the the in citizens do not get access to any of those things like government has access to all of uh, everything that we do yeah. they know every bloody thing we do not know anything about them maybe they would want to record everything that they do uh, all the transactions within the various departments and ministries uh, all, all no not the confidential part but uh, maybe some parts which uh, which they which which should be publicly available so blockchain gives them a uh, platform to make it publicly available uh, that is one thing that they can do uh, second is uh, fight counterfeiting so there there are a few examples so uh, i'm not sure how it's how it's seen in the uh, us uh, or mexico uh, but um, if you talk about a country like india which is a developing country Several politicians or uh, several politicians mm, tend to go corrupt sometimes. Uh, what happens is they they see a short term quick reward, uh, uh, and they tend to accept it and do uh, things which are not uh, beneficial for the country or the citizens in long term. Yes. And they do it by uh, they do it by forging several documents, providing fake invoices, all sort of these things. What if? Uh, all the transactions and the invoices and everything, uh, all the instruments that are used for any transaction, what if these they, they are also uh, put up on the blockchain so that every any citizen any day can take a look at it and see there's nothing counterfeit, uh, there's, there's, no, there's no counterfeit uh, fee, uh, counterfeit activity that is happening. And if any if anyone finds it, they can vote it to stop the transaction. There could be, uh, there could be a time period of say two days uh, where uh, we, Basically, government will have, can, if they want to, give us the citizens some power back through blockchain, and they can say, "Hey, we we are trying to do this, and we want your take on it. What do you say? You have next to 48 hours. Just sit on your computer, open this mobile app, and cast your vote." And cryptography in the blockchain makes it possible to do it on mobile phones and laptops instead of um, having a ballot every bloody time. So this is there. There are two things that can happen. Third thing is what I believe is about ownership ledger. Uh, hey, hear me out. So, if you are born on a day, you'll be registered as a hey new uh, a new human being has come to this earth. So, you'll be registered uh, with some uh, re with some registry or ministry, and you'll be issued some birth certificate. Eventually, you'll graduate, and uh, you'll uh, get your graduation certificate. You'll own a car. You'll buy a car. You'll uh, buy some land. You'll buy a house. All of these things will be registered by government with, with, with government, and and now now all of these registries all of these claims that you have of owning something owners the, these things are just ownerships you say i have bought this land how do you prove it you say go to that ministry there's a record over here which says i bought this land from this particular guy at this price on this date instead of that record staying in, in the four walls of that registry or, or that uh, department or the ministry that can be on the blockchain publicly available it 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 would not uh, reveal your identity or your identity you will be referred by some number or some private key or public key uh, on the blockchain or uh, not the private key the public key on the blockchain uh, so these things can happen all the land registries can move to blockchain all the all the public data uh, all the all the, all the uh, public sector can move to blockchain by building i don't know a nationwide ownership ledger or even better a planet wide ownership ledger where everything is contained on blockchain and every country on this planet uh, uses that ledger instead of 
uh, that ledger being uh, distributed by geography it is available to any, any country anywhere this is an interesting thing that uh, that might happen uh, so these are the few things that i believe uh, governments can start doing but eventually eventually uh, I'm, I'm not too sure if they'll do it because every time they put a blockchain and they remove themselves from that particular uh, uh, area they're actually losing a little bit of power they're saying now we do not have this power to do this thing uh, there are several politicians uh, in every country i believe who are there to make some quick bucks out of it and they do it because the whole process is opaque and if you do it and if you make it transparent uh, people might not like it they might not like it and they they might be some resistance but eventually if there is maybe one nation might want to start with it and then eventually uh, the other other nations follow because they'll face some pressure from their citizens i don't know but uh, they there will be some resistance from the government but if they start doing it it will be a welcoming step from them and eventually they'll also realize that this will lead into a day where the citizens will realize that they do not need the government at all everything now happens on blockchain that is decentralized powered by nodes um, managed by this open source protocol open source software that is written by developers so basically we do not need anything if there is a if there is a road that has to be uh, made over here so the people over here can just vote in their uh, cast in their votes uh, there could be several tenders from various builders or construction uh, managers and uh, the, the, the people in that particular area can cast their vote who they want to go to uh, go with based on the reputation of these builders and then eventually uh, the builder will start building it and all the transactions that a builder would do with the other material suppliers that will also happen on the blockchain so everything happens on the blockchain uh, so it, it, it will be an idle day but if everything happens on the blockchain that we do not need these uh, people to take care of us we actually will be saying to them uh, hey we have found this way to help ourselves so we do not need your assistance anymore uh, if so that that is that that is something that might happen in future but yeah to we, we can start with baby steps and see where it and see where it leads like in 40 50 years of time yeah i think yeah. Uh, i think uh, you know there's you know, there's the most the most i don't i i, 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 I don't remember if it's singapore or one of those other countries that are kind of really advanced in terms of, of their you know governance mm -hmm. that are trying to implement you know blockchain or even accepting payments as you were as we were talking earlier you know through mm -hmm. Bitcoin and whatnot so I mean it's, it's like everything else right so it starts with very niche and then uh, eventually you know it needs to catch on but you know big big countries um, need to I, I mean I actually see a lot of uh, benefits towards developing countries not so much the, the the ones who are already established. I mean, obviously it's for everybody, but develop, developing countries can leapfrog. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, you know, in, to 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 a, an emerging economy simply because they don't have all the other things they have to deal with in terms of, you know, the you know existing government uh, tendencies and policies. But uh, I mean, do you, in, in India, how does it how does it look? I mean, are they even thinking about it? Yeah. So. In India, uh, things are in flux right now. Uh, so, see, these cryptocurrencies can be thought of various different things. Uh, this could be an instrument. This could be a, the instrument of exchange of uh, value. This could be an. This could be a security. Uh, so, uh, there are several. Where there, there are various industries who uh, regulate these two spaces. So, things are in flux. What ministry should uh, would do? What part of the of the thing? But uh, the the overall the overall uh, the overall feeling in India is not very positive towards virtual currencies or, or cryptocurrencies. Um, people are afraid. Uh, the the people in government are afraid. What if they take away all the powers that we have? Uh, what if? And and their argument is, what if uh, there are some people who start doing illegal things, uh, like uh, with, with using cryptocurrencies? Uh, they still do using cash, uh, and cash is absolutely not uh, 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 it, it is not possible to, tra to follow the trail of the cash but it is somehow possible to trail uh, to follow the trail of the cryptocurrencies and you can know some things actually where, where all the cryptocurrency has gone to so in that way cryptocurrencies are more useful uh, for the government than cash when they make this argument but yeah the things are not very good if you ask me but uh, still we are in flux so i would not reach to an argument uh, to, to 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 an uh, mm, to to a final conclusion 
but let's see over next few months what happens uh, things um, might take a turn <laughs> yeah um, do you know of uh, any any um, you know country that's actively pushing an agenda of uh, blockchain for the government hmm so uh, there is this uh, japan they uh, yes so they released a nationwide cryptocurrency so their idea is hey we are welcoming cryptocurrencies to be used nationwide and uh, this uh, and we'll evangelize this cryptocurrency so eventually in next several years you can use this cryptocurrency to get get a haircut or buy some coffee at any anywhere so we 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 are actually accepting that cryptocurrencies are here to stay and we'll not oppose it and we'll welcome it uh, japan is one uh, china also tested out a nationwide cryptocurrency uh, about about two and a half months back and mm -hmm. uh, recently recently they came out uh, with with a with a decision that they'll ban all the icos uh, I, I don't know i don't know what will happen but yeah uh, japan is was was among the first ones to uh, welcome the cryptocurrencies, a nationwide cryptocurrency. Awesome. Um, I mean, I, I, I mean, I have to let you go, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we can keep going on and on. Um, do you have any any last thoughts you want to share with uh, my readers and listeners? <laughs> uh they, 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 they are no as a last thoughts. But uh, I would say, do not just ignore anything that is happening around you uh, there are several people who say hey this is too early things are too early yes but uh, you do not judge a yeah. tree by looking by looking at its seed seeds are always small tiny and eventually they uh, grow up into uh, becoming these huge trees uh, and the people who identify the potential of a seed early on they are the they 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 they, they make maximum money uh, out of that and people who realize later on hey this was a tree now we'll try to grab a couple of fruits uh, we'll throw some stones and grab some couple of fruits or long hanging fruits those are the late comers to the party they make little money but if you realize the potential of this thing forget about the investment point of view but if anyone anyone recognize the potential from the technology and the economics behind it point of view they important huge businesses can be built on top of it the current Companies that are out there, the largest companies, uh, which are Facebook, Google, and all, all of these companies, they can be beaten using blockchain. Uh, th this is an outrageous comment to make, but yeah, next the, the biggest companies of next uh, couple of decades will have some sort of decentralization within themselves. You know what? I think yes. I think we, we have another chat, <laughs> another chat topic. <laughs> yes, with that last one with that last one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we can have a lot more. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm serious. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, all right, man. Thank you. Thank you again for, uh, you know, jumping on the, the chat with me. And, um, you know, just, uh, you know, if people who didn't listen to you the, in the previous uh, chat we had, you know, where can they find you? Yeah. So uh, you can, I'm always available on Twitter and I'm very active on Twitter. So if you can follow me on Twitter at Mohit Mamoria, my first name and last name, M O H I T M A M O R I A. Uh, besides that, if you just want to talk to me or chat with me uh, privately, uh, you can drop an email, my first name, last name at gmail.com. Uh, and then, uh, but at last, I'll, I'm just uh, plugging it. Uh, if, if, if you want us to manage your money and give you some sort of returns, then you can sign up at godtoken.org. G O D token.org. Very good, man. All right, Thanks, man. Sir. Thank you again, and uh, we'll, I'm pretty sure we're going to chat pretty soon again for the next topic. Yes, yes. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> All right, man. Take it easy. Okay. Thanks so much.